Mark Caballi, our friend, our colleague, he was on with us yesterday from The Athletic, says the Mitch Trubisky signing one of the worst free agent deals in Pittsburgh Steelers history. Man, now that we know what we know about Mason Rudolph, what a disaster that was. Like yeah. They should have just gone into the year with Mason Rudolph as the starting quarterback last season. <laughs> if you didn't want Kenny to be the guy right away, you wanted him to, to sit there and simmer, I guess. Why wouldn't they just have let Mason do that? Right. Like, Because think it out even further, Paul. But, I, but, but for some reason, there there was a, I don't know if like an attitude is the right, there was an attitude in that building that Mason Rudolph just wasn't good enough. It's well, almost, from the big time decision maker for it's sure. Almost, yeah, it's almost like they and, and they sort of signed him like, well, he doesn't have any other options. He's a good emergency quarterback, but we'll never have to use him. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, how can you watch all of those practices and not, you know, and you're watching your quarterbacks just stink the joint up and not say to yourself, you know what, maybe that dude is worth giving him a shot. Right. He, by all accounts, and Mark Caboli said this a million different times, he was the best of the three in that competition in training camp, Mason Rudolph was. Right. But play it out a little bit here, Paul. What if Mitch Trubisky, like even if it succeeded, you almost would have failed. Like what if Mitch Trubisky had played well enough to not get benched, but <clears throat> not much better than right, that? Right, And you're still sitting around at 9 and 8, 10 and 7 at the end of the year, but Kenny Pickett didn't get in. Like think about what, what would have happened then. Like, he needed to be bad or to get hurt for Kenny Pickett to ever have his shot. No, for, but Rudolph, if he was okay, for have a shot, no, yeah. for Kenny even. Yes. Like, oh, okay. Two, two years saying. ago. Right. Like, uh, Mitch's first year with the Steelers. Like, you were banking on uh, him at some point, if you were going to give Kenny a shot, not being good enough or getting hurt. It's well, just a bizarre right. thing now to look I at thought, in retrospect. I thought you meant at the end of this year. Because well, what if he was not quite good enough but not terrible? I mean, the good news for the Steelers is he was terrible, and they put Mason Rudolph in. They had no choice. Mm -hmm. But what if he was just kind of not quite good enough? The more quarterback conversations that we've had over these last couple of days, you know, oh, maybe it's Justin Fields. Maybe it's Russell Wilson. The kind of pie-in-the-sky options that the Steelers don't usually do stuff like that. Or it's just you're reshuffling guys underneath Kenny Pickett. The reality of the situation is they don't have one great option here on how to enter next season at quarterback, right? <laughs> That's depressing, isn't it? Yes, because it's not like you're going to make a trade, a huge trade, and get one of those top three quarterbacks. Like, that's not going to happen. I don't know that they have enough to give up even to make that happen. When you think about some of these offers these teams could be fielding, you could take a guy in the middle of the first round where you're drafting, but then what, you're, you're redocking with Kenny Pickett and then Kenny Pickett 2.0. They don't have a single great option. The best option on the table for me is the Justin Fields trade. Well, that would give them the opportunity maybe to have a dynamic player at that right. position. And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying he's dynamic. I'm saying he's got upside and he, you know, he's got all the things you talk about where you say maybe he can be dynamic. But it's depressing when you sit around and you watch Mahomes, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, all these guys we talk about who are, you know, incredible talents. I mean, you can say whatever you want to say about Justin Herbert. The guy's a physical freak. If he played 15 years ago, people would be looking at him going, we've never seen anything like this, right? right? If he played in a, with a better team, a better offensive line, and a couple better players even. Uh, actually, if he played with a better coach than you know, he's been saddled with the last few years. And all I'm saying is you look at all these teams that have those dynamic playmakers at that particular position – and then you realize the Steelers are talking about going into the season with Kenny Pickett, who we're not sure anything about other than maybe he can be okay, and Ryan Tannehill, whose best year was turning around and handing the ball off to Derrick Henry, if you think about it. Right. I, Paul, the, if the best option is Justin Fields, who I, I always believed in and who I think can be a pretty good NFL player, but if that's your best option – you are taking a flyer. You are taking a massive risk. He's not all that dissimilar from Kenny Pickett from a what have they accomplished standpoint. You know, we talked to Spielberger earlier. That roster has been awful around him in Chicago right. and the coaching staff. Right. Now, the Steelers have had their coaching issues, but the roster is better. And so Kenny Pickett at least was able to win some games without putting up consistent numbers. But 
I'll bet on Fields more than I'll bet on Kenny because he's got the measurables and he's got the athleticism right. and he's got the upside. But whatever way you slice it, you are bringing the proverbial knife to the AFC gunfight. 